I just want to read from uh, John chapter 10 and um, verse 27. Right? John chapter 10, verse 27. And this, uh, these are the words of the Lord. And the Lord is saying, you know, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Okay. So the Lord is making this, um, you know, this absolute statement. And he's saying, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Right. So it just applies to all of us who follow or who are followers of the shepherd, right? We have received the Lord as Lord and Savior. So we qualify to be his sheep. And this is what the Lord says about us, about his sheep. And he says, my sheep hear my voice. So he has designed us, created us, fashioned us as new creations to hear his voice. Right? And he knows us. Right? And he knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows us inside out. So he has fashioned us in such a way to hear his voice. And he knows us. And the last part is that he causes us to hear his voice so that we follow him. And it says that, and they follow me. Right? So if we are qualified to be sheep, which is simply because we are born again and we have received him as Lord as Savior. Right. So that is what qualifies to be his sheep, that we follow him, that we have received him. It says we have been designed to hear his voice. Right. So if there are if there's anything in our in us, if there are any question, any doubt in us, um, you know, can I hear or can I hear accurately? And we, we need to dispel the doubt because uh, he this is what he has designed us for. Right. He has designed us to hear his voice. Now we might put barriers. We might, uh, you know, we might go astray and uh, far away so that we don't hear his voice. But the thing is, in his plan and purpose, it is his will that we hear his voice. Right. So he has designed us to hear his voice, and he says, "I know them, and they follow me." Right? So this is our purpose to hear his voice. This is our you know, the chief end is to follow him, right? To follow him, to obey him, um, to every desire of his, to really go ahead and do it, right? So let's um, let's pray and um, let's just commit ourselves to God, commit ourselves to hearing his voice, right? Whatever it takes to hear his voice, right? And put away all, um, you know, all barriers, everything that's, that seems to drown out his voice, we need to put it away, right? We need to keep that aside. You know, maybe the things of the flesh, uh, maybe other so-called voices, right? When we say other so-called voices, you know, talking about other inducements or Satan's invitations, you know, just putting it aside, saying, you know, I, I choose to hear the voice of the shepherd, right? Father God, we, we thank you for this reminder that you have created us to hear your voice. You have designed us to hear your voice, Lord, as new creations, God. Father, we thank you for this amazing privilege to hear the voice of the shepherd, to hear the voice of the creator, of this omnipotent, omniscient God. Lord, everyone, the whole entire humanity is searching, Lord, searching for meaning, searching for truth, searching for intimacy, O oh God. And Lord, you have created us, Lord, in your image, Father God, to hear your voice. And Father, we thank you. And Lord, we pray that that we will purpose, Lord, to continue to hear, that we will not put anything, Lord, between us and you, O oh God, that nothing, nothing of the flesh, nothing of our unrenewed mind and thinking, God, nothing, no sin, Lord, no hindrance, Lord, that we will allow to come between, Lord, us and you, O oh God, that we may hear you clearly and that we may follow you, that we may obey, O oh God, what you instruct us. We just want to thank you that you have enabled us to do so. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, we're continuing with where we uh, left off last class. So this is... Um, um, 
principles for divine prosperity. We were looking at the last few uh, points. That is honoring God in our finances, and we looked at tithing, giving, giving of alms, and um, yeah, we had an interesting discussion on tithing and uh, yeah, um, you know how much and so on. So we just we just finished that um, entire session by saying that you know the word tithe itself means one tenth. So while you know we can give more, and in fact in the scriptures there are you know, uh, uh, when people are there, there is this institute. What God has instituted, where uh, people give tithe, people give offerings, and so on, um, and uh, and so we we saw the reasons why you know why certain things ended at the cross. Right? We looked at the blood sacrifice. We looked at you know other things that ended uh, explicitly ended at the cross, and uh, while we see other things continuing, right. Um, like worshiping with instruments and so on. It's not, it's not anything explicitly mentioned that it's ended at the cross. So so also with tithes and offerings, um, so that we continue on into the new dispensation, into the new covenant, right? That uh, we continue with that, right? Okay, so we stopped there last class. And um, today we look at, uh, let me just share the screen. Okay, so today we look at a few more things, uh, principles for prosperity. That is, uh, it's a very simple thing that we listen to the Holy Spirit. Okay, listen to God, listen to the Holy Spirit when it comes to when it comes to things of um, like even things like money, uh, planning, maybe spending. Uh, investing. We're going to look at all that uh, in a little while. But uh, the thing is to listen to the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, uh, you know, many times we, when we, when it comes to listening to God or listening to the Holy Spirit, um, maybe when it, you know, things like money or spending or you know things concerned with money are are not the usual things that we, you know, that we go to God. Or, or we ask him for, you know, Lord, what should what should I do with this? This is not the, you know, this is not the usual thing. We, we might we might actually, you know, ask God or listen to Him or actively seek Him for, you know, many other things. Um, so the one reason or one very good reason why we can, right, why we should rather uh, seek Him. Is because of his declaration, Isaiah 48 and verse 17, where the Lord says, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, right? who leads you by the way you should go. Oh, that you had heeded my commandments, then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. So the Lord is saying, you know, I'm the one who teaches you to profit, right? who teaches you to benefit, to receive a benefit. So, um, you know, purely in financial terms, profit is what you have after all your overheads are paid, and over all your expenses are taken off, uh, are paid off. Like you know, expenses like rent, and you know, if it's a business, if it's like uh, rent and salaries, and you know, raw material cost, and everything is, and you know, everything is paid off, then what you have is the profit. And the Lord is saying that I'm the one who teaches you. To do so, right? If we turn back to Isaiah 28, okay, um, Isaiah chapter 28, and if we read through verses 23 to 29, we see that the Lord, being the omniscient one, the all-knowing one, we see that he, he, you know, uh, while we attribute God to be the uh, all-knowing one, while we attribute God to be the all-powerful one, that He is the Creator God. Many times we forget that he knows how creation works because he created, that he knows how um, you know the systems and everything, the processes work because he created, but he is the all-knowing one. Okay, so when we look, go through these verses, we see that um, um, 
you know, it talks about agriculture, it talks about the plowman, verse 24, it says the plowman, he keeps plowing, or does he keep plowing all day? Does he keep turning his soil? Um, and when he has leveled the surface, does he not sow the black cumin and scatter the cumin, plant the wheat and rose, etc.? You know, does he keep plowing always? No, after a certain time, when the land is turned over, uh, he, when the soil is turned over, he, he sows, he sows these seeds. And then he says, for he instructs him, who? God instructs him in right judgment. His God teaches him. Okay, so it says here uh, about the about the harvest. Okay, verse twenty-seven onwards. For the black cumin is not threshed with a threshing sledge, nor is a cartwheel rolled over the cumin, because you know it can actually easily break and become a powder. So it says the black cumin is beaten out with a stick, and the cumin with the rod. Bread flour must be ground, therefore he does not thresh it forever, break it with his cartwheel or crush it with his horsemen. Look at verse 29. This also comes from the Lord of hosts, who is excellent in counsel, uh, sorry, wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance. Like he's wonderful in counsel, excellent in guidance. So we can trust him with our finances or financial decisions and uh, we can trust him with the expectation that the Lord will cause us to prosper. The Lord will teach us to profit. Okay, So listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to God's leading because he knows and he leads. Okay, The other one that we can see is to receive God's prophetic word. Well, Second Chronicles 2020 talks about how the Lord blesses, listen to his prophets so that you may prosper. Ezra 6.14 also talks about the ministry of the prophets and how the people prospered because of that. So, so the thing is this, you know, receive God's prophetic word, which means that God, the inspired word of God, now the prophetic word can come through others. The prophetic word can be quickened to you, right, for others. But the thing is this, receive it. It is God speaking. So without, you know, it goes without saying that we need to trust. I mean, we need to test. We need to receive it. We need to test it. And um, and then and then apply the word of God, right? Apply the prophetic word. But it has to be tested and so on. So we do that. Um, but God has instituted this just as he instructs us. Just as the Holy Spirit instructs us in wisdom, Holy Spirit teaches us to profit. The prophetic word enables us to, to get into or to walk in the plan and purpose of our God. The plan and purpose of God for us is so that we will thrive and flourish. Okay. So coming back to prosperity, you know, prosperity, it's not just about money, right? It's uh, divinely orchestrated, divinely appointed means, divinely appointed ways through which uh, God enables us to uh, walk in divinely appointed success, right? walk in success, to thrive and flourish. Right? So, so that's our God. So it, when we look at prosperity, it's not just about money. But money is a part of it as well. Okay? okay, then the third one, get wisdom, counsel, and knowledge. Get wisdom. You know, uh, there's nothing wrong in getting wisdom and wisdom comes from him he's the primary source of wisdom he's the primary source of knowledge you know he is like we said he is um, 28 he is um i said 28 yeah so what is he's wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance so this is our god so it comes from him so he's the source so we can receive from him so get wisdom knowledge and counsel now proverbs 8 talks about uh, the the connection between wisdom counsel knowledge and how it is related to financial prosperity right? um you know you can read through all the other references also it talks about there is the the connection to success and wisdom the connection to knowledge and uh, the connection uh, between that and and prosperity, right? Um, so we can, you know, if you can just go through that, uh, all these references in in the book of Proverbs. Okay. 
Um, uh, just one verse. Let me just read out. Uh, Proverbs 8, 1 starts, uh, it, it's about wisdom. It's, uh, um, it, it talks about how wisdom cries out and understanding lift up um, her voice and so on. Uh, verse 18 says, riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. You know, you just see that, enduring riches and righteousness. Verse 21, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth that I may fill their treasuries okay so there is this you know very intricate connection between wisdom and knowledge and you know wealth as well where the application of wisdom where the outflow of wisdom or the uh, use of wisdom you know causes an inflow of wealth and and we see it in the natural world right we see it in the natural world we see it in the physical world when you know when there is knowledge and when people use it uh, when there is wisdom, people use it, and it causes, um, you know, there is there is a transaction. You know, the use of that causes wealth come in. Right. So the Lord, who is the source of all wisdom and knowledge, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom, and He is the source. He's excellent, wonderful in knowledge and and counsel. So He causes us to prosper. He causes us to be successful. He causes us to thrive and flourish financially as well, right? So these are some principles that uh, that are for us in Scripture, so that we can. And then these principles are there for us to apply, right? that we apply, and um, and then we see that we see the fruit of that, fruit of ap applying, fruit of persisting, right? Fruit of uh, uh, enduring and continuing to walk in that right okay so any questions here before we move on to the next one any questions in person online um no questions at all okay okay uh, at any point you know feel free um probably you can put it on the chat as, as well right okay so uh, let's look at uh, chapter 6 now chapter 6 is the uh, final chapter in the in the course material um uh, on in financial stewardship so uh, chapter 6 talks about um some practical guidelines right regarding our personal finances now these are some things that you may be practicing already um some of you may be very uh, well versed in it Right? You may be very experienced in it, but this is just a you know some of the simple uh, practical ways of um, uh, you know guidelines for personal finances. Okay. So uh, it it is a it is an overview, and um, which means that if you want to go in depth in it, uh, then we we do have the workshop financial workshop. Um, biblical finances and so on. So we have a workshops happening. Recently concluded one, I think uh, this was last month sometime. Um, so we, uh, so you you can attend. You know any one of those to get the right perspective. Go into a little more depth into these things. These are practical things, right? So the first one, um, some of the material is uh, you know adapted from Christian Financial Professionals Network, right? Um, so these are. Uh, like we, we always recommend, you know, these are some basic ideas. Okay, so if you want to, uh, especially if you are tuning in from a different nation, um, you know, certain other rules might apply. Certain, you know, the which are specific to that country, but these are basic guidelines. Okay, okay. So let's look at the first one. You know, the first one is biblical stewardship. Okay, so the understanding with which we are getting into all this is that. The, um, that we are stewards. Okay, who is a steward? A steward is an overseer. A steward is a manager. Okay, so when it comes to finances, we see that everything belongs to God. Okay, uh, we need to we need to understand that, especially if you look at Psalm twenty four and verse one. Okay, Psalm twenty four, verse one. Okay, Psalm 24 and 1, it says, The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. 
says for well, he had founded upon the seas and established upon the on, uh, waters and so on um so the world is the lord's okay? the earth is the lord's and its fullness right so everything belongs to him right everything uh, he's the owner of it and we see that we are stewards because god created us and put us here um to he's given us certain responsibilities and just like he did with adam and eve he put them in the garden and he said you tend to it you know you gave us gave them a responsibility of work and so on so we see that we are stewards okay so what is stewardship if you one was one word to define it it is um, the use of god given resources it is the use of god given not the abuse of god given resources but the use of it right when you say abuse it's a wrong use right it is a right use of god given resources for the accomplishments of god's objectives right so when we say god objectives it does not mean only let's say you know spending of money to build a church spending of money to build uh, or uh, you know to to have public meetings right it is not only that so when we look at accomplishment of god's objectives like right? we look at it as a as a kingdom of god establishing of righteousness establishing of justice establishing of peace right so biblical stewardship comprises of that that we it's the use is the right use of god's resources god given to us and a steward you know what i mean we look at uh, when you look at the word of god you see that a steward um, the lord jesus says a steward is expected to be faithful okay so faithfulness and faithfulness in the little things right if one is not faithful in the small things if one is not faithful in the hundreds and the fifties you know then one will not be faithful in the hundred thousand or the fifty thousands right so one is expected to be faithful in the small things so that god can entrust uh, the true riches that god can entrust the bigger things right so one is expected to be faithful the, the good steward also protects is not wasteful but he protects okay so the, the, the steward is faithful the steward protects the steward also enlarges okay we see in the parable of the talents where uh, we see that the lord is actually asking you know what did you do with you know talent actually that word there refers to the currency of those times right a measure measure of uh, wealth so a currency so uh, so it, it's i know we've we've applied it to you know talents and abilities right uh, maybe um, okay do you have this what has god gifted you with right there's nothing wrong in applying in in those ways also that god has given us something and we are called to be faithful with it we are called to use it utilize it uh, so that it can you know become bigger better and and so on so if you look at the parable it's it's about it about it's about finances so god gives us the wealth and uh, uh, and at the end of it you see that the steward is expected to do something with it and expected to do it and uh, the lord commends the steward who does something with it right who uses it rightfully who engages i mean uses it rightfully so that it it multiplies right so we see that um uh you know these are all that are expected of us to uh, to be faithful to be not to be wasteful to protect to even invest and it you know with all this is the god uh god's objectives okay what is the accomplishment of his objectives you know with this so you when you look at our own lives we see okay god what is it right when you're seeking first his kingdom you're seeking first his rule and reign over our lives and then his plan and purpose lord what can i uh, this is, involves us also right 
Um, so many times we 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 don't involve include ourselves. We think, okay, this, you know, it it can be. How can I be selfish? You know, everything needs to be, you know, given away. How can I be selfish? But that's that's not how God sees it. And First Timothy six verse seventeen, very clear that God is the one who gives us richly all things, as a father gives to the child, right? uh, um, as a parent gives to the children. He's the one who gives us richly all things to enjoy. But our trust is not in those uncertain riches. We trust in God. Our trust is not to be in those riches. Right? So a steward is holds these things lightly, holds the finances lightly. You know, he's an instrument, he or she is an instrument of God's finances to just flow in and flow out through their lives. Okay. So um so that that is the thing. So you know, which means that our entire life, uh, whatever money comes in comes out. You know, if we treat it that way, you know, saying, "Okay, God, you know, these are things that these are the needs, and uh, these are, you know, and the, the Bible talks about that. Matthew six talks about how God knows our needs, so there's nothing wrong in spending on our needs, uh, but also to go beyond that, right, and to be faithful." And not to be wasteful, and to make sure there's something good comes of it to be utilized for His kingdom. Okay, so um, God would call each one of us to, you know, maybe do a in, in a specific area, or you know, in a in a certain endeavor and something that He's planned for us. So uh, we can do that as individuals, as families, like to seek Him and say, okay, God, you know, in what way can I uh, help? Uh, in your kingdom, right? Okay. So uh, may the Lord enable us to expand our scope, right? Uh, like I said, it's it's not just not just building a church or a church project. It's much beyond that. Okay. Okay. So then, uh, the second thing that we're going to look at is financial planning. Okay. So since we, um, you know, God, God is a God of plan. Okay, God is a God of order. You know, His plans or His counsel stand till the end. So God is a God. It, it, it's not, um, you know, unscriptural to plan. Okay, um, when we when we look at you know another subject, and I, I'm sure other subjects that you you will see that it is not unscriptural to plan. So it, you know, the thing is that when we plan to include God. We plan to be led by the Spirit. You see, that's the important thing, and right? so to include God in our planning. So also, when it comes to finances, or you know, there are different needs. There, there are these. You know, there's this resource that I have. There's this money. There are these material things that I have. Now, how do I use it in order to meet these needs? Right. So I need to plan. How do I use it? You know, if I have thousand rupees in my hand, so how do I? How can I use it to, you know, fulfill these needs? So, which means it requires allocation. Okay, which means uh, we do it, right? Okay, I'm going to do this for my whatever. You know, if you're a student, you know, you will say, okay, I'm going to use this for my um, for eating out. I'm going to use this for uh, you know for buying my toiletries and you know uh, cosmetics, whatever. I'm going to use this for clothing. I'm going to use this for you know for a bus pass or commute from one place to another. So we plan it, right? We it, it, the thing is, we need to. Maybe some of us don't. Right? We don't even think on those terms. So we need to plan. Okay, there's nothing wrong in planning. So when it comes to, um, you know, finances, uh, God is not against us planning and utilizing. Okay. So some practical things to look at is, you know, even as we maybe start earning or receiving, um, you know, money to be used for. Uh, uh, you know, practical needs. Now, these are some things that will come up. Okay, uh, if there is a you know gross income, then there will be the tithe, there will be the tax. So these are different heads, right, under which um, the money will be you know spent. And we, first of all, is you know our tithe and our offerings and and what we are going to do with it in order to support God's kingdom, uh, the work of the, uh, God's kingdom, and so on. 
So we start with that, and then we go on to other things. You know, after deducting that, you know, tax is something which could be deducted at source, in the sense if you are employed, the the organization, the employer will deduct the tax and then pay it on your behalf. Right. So uh, it is tax is deducted at source. Okay. So then uh, you know you you have the freedom with the tithes and offerings, and then so this is a uh, this is roughly you know how it could go. These percentages which are mentioned here. So uh, a third of it would go into accommodation or housing, right? Um, so for your stay, right? um, so a third of it would um, uh, would go, and then the rest of it would you know if you see those different heads there, where there is um, you know different categories there, there, there is. Uh, food, there is uh, auto, meaning your travel or commute or vehicle uh, maintenance. And then there's insurance, um, you know, debt in the sense if there is a loan or repayment of it. Um, then there's entertainment, clothing, you know, if there is savings, then there could be medical expenditure. And, you know, if there are children, then, you know, childcare and, and school, education and so on. Right? And if there are you know, further on, if there are investments, right? So this is a roughly, you know, a working or workable a breakup. Okay, now this is this is a suggestion, but when it comes to housing, this or rent, you know, they say that you know, uh, if it is, um, uh, or you know, housing, food, and uh, housing, food, clothing, and also um, travel and commute, you know, what you spend on vehicles and so on. Um, then if that goes beyond 70%, okay, if it goes beyond 70%, then it becomes difficult to actually sustain, right? So the thing is to make sure that it's, you know, that you know, see now our, our income or where we are financially is not going to remain the same, right? Even as we trust God, even as we work, we, even as we employ all these principles of uh, you know financial prosperity, um, you know we're not going to stay in that same place. God will take us from one level to another level, right? Um, so we don't have to be fearful and afraid. You know, uh, oh, what will happen? You know, will I ever be in a comfortable place? Right? Will I ever be in a place where I can be a blessing to others, or will I be in a place where I can? maybe enjoy these blessings for myself. God will take us. God will take us from where we are um, to where we need to be. So we don't have to be fearful, right? So God will take us. Um, the thing is to, during that process, the thing is to keep these things in mind. Okay. Um, so, so which means that we need to have, a, it is good to have a budget. Okay, it's good to have a budget. It's good to track what are those things that we are spending money on. Okay, I don't know. Maybe you, you, some of us are there who would write down. Okay, this month, this is what I spent on. You know, uh, this is the money I I got, I received, and this is what I spent on. I spent so much on food. I spent so much on. I bought this. I bought that. You know, some of us may be very very disciplined in that, but some of us could be like, yeah, I don't know where it went. You know, I, I got so much at the beginning of the month, but end of the month, I have no clue, no idea how, how I spent, where I spent it. You know, at least now, if you're using Google Pay or, you know, things like that, you you have a track, right? you have a statement. Um, so if you're using, you know, money digitally, at least you can go back and look at the statement and say, okay, oh, this is where it went. And no wonder, you know. There's nothing left. I used to don Swiggy. I used to don this. Uh, you know, no wonder there's so much, so little left at the end of the month, right? So you can at least track. Okay. The thing is to uh, to have a budget. Okay. See, when we have a budget, some people say, okay, does that mean that you don't have faith in God? That God will not provide? But it's not that. A budget is to just to help us plan in advance where we can spend. You know, look at it that this way. You know, if you can. Uh, you know, if you can look at budget as something where I can cut down on wasteful expenditure. Okay, I'm spending to maybe I'm spending this uh, money on this, you know, and and it's something that I can cut down on. 
right it is unnecessary it is wasteful or maybe i can i can you know reduce it and use it elsewhere you know things like maybe there's too much on entertainment and too much on uh, you know maybe eating out maybe too much on clothing right um well i can always change it i can say okay let me adjust it i, I know i don't have to do that right so um a planning uh and uh, uh, you know a budget will really help right? it helps to see okay this is how much uh where i'm spending i'm spending so much on rent i'm spending so much on this it will help us to plan it will help us to cut down on wasteful things so you can spend on what is necessary okay okay uh, so far everything is okay so financial planning uh financial stewardship okay so it's good to have financial goals as well okay financial goals um where we we trust god and we say okay lord you know i'm uh, maybe a financial goal could be maybe buying a buying a vehicle right why are we why, you know i say okay why do you need one well well let's say your income is at a place where you can where you can afford to maybe buy a bike maybe maintain one it's it's so we can always buy a bike or a car right there are loans and all that and some of you can get one but the 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 challenging part is to maintain it is to you know run it and then you need to have fuel for it right so that's the thing so so if you are at a place if you are at a place where we can afford uh, to buy a vehicle to, uh, for to run a vehicle um maintain it okay so we plan ahead okay uh, what is that goal what are some things that i can uh, you know it, it's actually a statement of faith by right? saying okay god you know by this stage in life um you know in so many years or in so many months god i need to be able to you know use or buy this so what do i need to do in terms of work in terms of maybe saving spending right what is it that i can change to reach that goal okay so there are those some things to keep in mind when it comes to again financial stewardship and planning so what are some financial goals it could be about housing right? it could be about maybe you reach a stage where you're thinking okay maybe we can you know buy a house you know it seems like too much now but then maybe you know 10 years from now 15 years from now you know we'd like to do that or come to a place of you know owning something right? so these are financial goals which we prayerfully consider um, and uh, and do it right so it can be in the area of individual things but also in terms of uh, ministry or church you know you can have some financial goals okay but we are primarily talking about personal right personal financial goals okay then also you know uh, when it comes to financial stewardship we can think about our lifestyle okay well you know what is the correct christian lifestyle when it comes to money right the bible doesn't talk about it the bible in in the word of god we see people who you know who were rich who used finances we see people see people who are you know business people we see heads of state we see all kinds of people there so well the bible does not really you know say that this is how much you know of course it talks about offering to god it talks about worshiping god the finances but it doesn't say okay, this is the kind of lifestyle you should have so we decide right we choose we we, we say okay um and right. uh, as long as it's not extravagant as long as it's not selfish selfish you know uh, only for myself and not considering others right as long as it it's within biblical principles right? we choose we decide we have the freedom right um if you look at matthew 25 um 21 okay let's uh, 
Okay. Uh, feel free if you have any questions on this or any any thoughts that you want to add to. Yeah, let's look at um, the Matthew twenty five, um, okay, verse twenty one. It's about the um, uh, about the parable of the uh, the talents. Right. You see this. So he says, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Okay, so when it comes to um, lifestyle, when it comes to you know faithfulness, well, that's the that's the criteria. Right? Am I am I being faithful in what God has asked me to? Am I faithfully spending it? Faithful in the spending, faithful in utilizing. Okay, so these are things that we need to uh, look at rather than, okay, I'm spending, uh, you know, the, what will the other person say? You know, sometimes we live our lives out of fear, fear of man. Right? Um, fear of man saying, okay, what will they think? Oh, I need to, I'm my family, you know, you're, let's say you're in ministry and then you want to take your family out. So, you know, the thing is, what will they think? You know, the, um, they'll think that, okay, the, you know, this pastor, this evangelist is doing this. Uh, you know, what will they think? You know, that kind of question. So the thing is, you know, what will God think? Right? Forget about uh, the first question is uh, accountability to God, right? So, um, so that's the thing. So the life, when it comes to lifestyle also, uh, you know, is it um, you know, is it something that I'm wasting? Is it something that I'm just spending it on my own pleasures and everything? But uh, just ask the, that question, right? So we, we see it's very, very relative. It changes, right? Um, maybe in a you know, in a city, it could be very, very different. Or it's a thing, you know, is it about where God is placed and how much He is blessed in terms of things? Um, in terms of income and so on, so we need to we need to consider all that. Now, if you look at Philippians four and verse eleven, okay, uh, Paul writes something very very uh, practical and it's wise. He says, "Not that uh, I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content." Okay, I know how to be abased, I don't know how to abound. Everywhere in all things, I've learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Okay, so he says that I've I've learned this. You know, uh, I've learned to be content. Okay, did somebody put their hand up? Uh, okay, um, I don't see anything. Just thought I heard. Um, uh, okay, so um, so he says, I know I've uh, in whatever state I am. I am content. Okay. So we see that contentment, godliness with contentment is great gain. Okay. And uh, this state of contentment is something which is so valuable, which is something so precious. And so when it comes to our lifestyle, are we content? Right. Um, so Paul says, I, I know, you know, whatever state I am to be content. And uh, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So it is in that context of knowing that, okay, I know how to be when I'm when there's nothing or when I, I know I'll be fine even when there are things. So material things don't have a hold on me is what, he, what he's saying. You know, I can be content and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So that's the con context, right? Um, so, so. Uh, so that's something for us to consider when we're considering a lifestyle. What kind of lifestyle should we have? You know, uh, contentment is something that needs to be at the core of it. Right? And with that, then you know, money won't have a hold on you. Okay? Money won't have a hold on us. You won't be dictated by money, but rather we will, you know, we will plan, we will allocate. And we will take the upper hand when it comes to money. Okay. Okay. So we'll um, go on to the next one. Okay. What about borrowing? Is it okay to borrow? Is it okay to take a loan? What do you think? Anyone? 
is it okay to borrow is it okay to take a loan what do you think the bible says is it sin to borrow what do you think anyone Everybody's quiet. Okay, let me ask a few people. Anand, what do you think? Is it okay to borrow? Is it okay to take a loan to buy a vehicle? Range Rover? Okay, Nina says, uh, not a sin, but maybe better to avoid. Okay, it can lead us to sin. Maybe dependent on the context. Okay, Shokma says, okay to take loan. Okay. Mm. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, so not a sin, but maybe to avoid. It can lead us to sin in the sense, yeah, you can get into a pattern of borrowing and uh, going from one, you know, one... Uh, uh, let's say uh, one loan to another loan and it can actually lead us heavily into debt okay so so one thing about loans is that uh, we need to understand that uh, uh, while it's great to apply and get and to be sanctioned a loan we need to understand that um, we need to pay back right loans uh, uh, you know, when you when you're earning like people come and uh, especially you know, credit cards and you know all those things we need one thing we need to understand that loans need to be paid back and uh, and it needs to be paid back in interest with an interest right so we need to consider that okay just um, think about that and then we will uh, we will meet in the next class and uh, probably next class will be our concluding uh, uh, session uh, let's see okay fine thank you Right, you guys have a great weekend. God bless. Bye bye.